What's up guys? We are going to be going into more of Boaz's book, the author of The Irrational Male, in this continuing series of The Red Pill Debunked, okay, and exposing the lies of Rolo Tomasi. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, I'm going to have a playlist in the end screen and you can go back through and watch the other parts. This is part six, okay, and, and this is gonna be an ongoing series. We've already done uh, five parts previous. Today we're gonna be covering the matrix, the red pill, and choice. Okay, so Rollo has stolen the intellectual property of the Wachowski brothers using their beautiful art to delude men rather than liberate them. Rollo does not understand the matrix and the metaphor of the red pill, a major reason for the book. The Matrix movies, The Matrix, The Matrix Reloaded, and The Matrix Revolutions are sophisticated pieces of art. I believe that you can't understand The Matrix completely without watching all three films. Many viewers love the first film but become disenchanted when watching the two other films because they are too philosophical and incoherent to the average viewer. Filmmaker Quentin Tarantino argued that The Matrix was once one of his favorite movies, but the other two films ruined the mythology of the first movie. This book will be a primer on The Matrix films so that one can watch all three films and finally understand the filmmaker's message. Many people have tried to figure out the matrix by dis dissecting it from the perspective of religious allegory, notably Christian Gnosticism or existential philosophy. Some have argued that it touches upon postmodernism because of the opening scene where Neo opens the book Simulacra and Simulation by Jean Baudrillard. This book deals with the modern world and our place in a culture dictated by the interests of commercial capitalism, such as what is real in human terms versus what is manufactured reality by multinational corporations. And how do we know what is true and just corporate conditioning? One is not wrong to think of these films from the perspective of a religious motif or postmodern philosophy. However, I believe the matrix is much simpler to understand. I would argue that Wachowski's uh, send the viewer in different directions, as in The White Rabbit and Alice in Wonderland. But the true meaning of the films is quite evident if the viewer pays close attention. The Matrix movies are concerned with the philosophical question of what is choice. The significant characters inside The Matrix, Agent Smith, the Oracle, the Architect, the, Mer the Merovingian, each have a philosophical discussion with the humans about choice from the beginning of the first movie to the end of the last film, in each scene they participate in. Machines are programmed to do as instructed, so they don't know about choice unless programmed by humans to understand choice. But our human characters don't understand choice in the movies. So instead, the machines teach them about choice from every angle. That is the paradox. Only humans should understand choice because computers are just machines that obey commands. The matrix is the opposite. Humans are manipulated by machines instead of humans manipulating machines. Essentially, the movies are about human choice and what motivates us to make choices. The computer programs inside the matrix are our teachers instead of our enemies. Intellectual and physical struggle leads to wisdom and enlightenment. Choices drive the plot of the matrix. Neo's choice to go out with his software customers to the club or stay at home at the movie start. Neo's choice to trust Trinity. Neo's choice to trust Morpheus. Neo's choice to stay on the window ledge or go back inside at work to deal with the agents. Neo's choice to go with Trinity in the car. Neo's choice to stay in the car or leave the car. Neo's choice to, de to get debugged. Neo's choice of the red pill or the blue pill. Neo's discussion with Morpheus about choosing our destiny. Neo's choice between reality or delusion. The choice of who and who not to unplug. Cypher's choice to be plugged back into the Matrix. Cypher's choice to become an actor. Cypher's choice to betray his comrades. Cypher's choice to call Mr. Reagan. Neo's choice of sitting uh, or standing up in the Oracle's kitchen. Um, Morpheus's choice to save Neo instead of himself. Neo's choice to save Morpheus. Trinity's choice to go with him. Morpheus's choice to have blind faith. Neo's choice to run for the agent, from the agents or fight the agents. Agent Smith's discussion with Morpheus about humans choosing a shitty world or a perfect world. And when Neo meets the architect in the second movie, the topic comes up again. The choice of the present or the future. The choice to be a human or a machine. The choice of slavery or liberation. The choice of rebellion or conformity. The choice of courage or cowardliness. The choice of means or the ends. The choice of selfishness or selflessness. Are we so deluded by the false notion of dualism that we are blind to unlimited possibilities instead of limited? 
What about having too much choice? Is that another form of control? Trinity is an essential character in the movies. She is an avatar for integrity. Notice how the words sound alike. The word Trinity can be removed from the word integrity. However, it is a specific type of integrity. Commitment, devotion, relentlessness. This is the Trinity. Trinity is committed, devoted, and relentless from the beginning of the first movie to the end of the last film. Trinity is heart. Trinity's heart drives Neo throughout the three films. Unfortunately, many are confused by what she represents. They think it means the Christian Trinity. I don't believe that is how the Wachowskis intended it. Religious motifs exist in the Matrix, however. The red pill versus blue pill choice is an allegory, as in the Bible's Genesis, for the choice in the Garden of Eden between the fruits offered. One fruit that offered eternal life, and the other fruit from the Tree of Knowledge that offered consciousness, suffering, and mortality. Agent Smith touches on this choice in discussion with Morpheus while tortured to reveal the location of Zion at the end of the Matrix. Neo's name in the Matrix is Mr. Anderson, which means the son of man or Adam. Morpheus is an essential character in the films because he is the avatar for belief. In mythology, Morpheus is the Greek god for dreams. Think of the phrase, dreaming is believing. The Wachowskis are incredibly clever with the language. In the movies, everybody mocks Morpheus for his blind faith and dreams of prophecy, but he believes regardless of the naysayers. Belief is what separates humans from animals and machines. Humans are the only entity in reality that believe. Animals can dream, but they can't believe. Nothing else in the universe can believe except human beings. Throughout the movies, Morpheus, belief, and Trinity, integrity, heart, drive Neo. Cypher, or Mr. Reagan, the traitor, is an avatar for temptation or seduction. Most have seen the cartoon about an angel whispering in one ear, the devil whispering in the other ear. Cypher is the voice inside your head that tells you to sleep in, procrastinate, eat junk food, make excuses, justify lousy behavior. Cypher is the voice that seduces you in taking shortcuts and the easy way out. Cypher wants to fuck Trinity, loves to drink, eat steak, wants to be an actor. Cypher is delusion, base desires, the temporary fix, the scratching of an itch. Cypher is wicked because he knows that the seductive power of the senses is only, is only temporary. Just as with Morpheus and belief, Cypher's seduction is an exclusively human quality that can't be replicated anywhere outside the realm of human beings. Agent Smith is a significant character. Agent Smith represents two aspects of our psyche. First, he is an avatar for personal struggle, but struggles inside our mind. People who meditate will understand Agent Smith. At first, Agent Smith is a mental agent that prevents us from starting our life journey or purpose. Second, Smith is the enemy of purpose, distraction. Smith is a, is a villain because once we find meaning after struggling to find one, the mind gets crazier and does everything possible to stop people from staying on purpose. Think of social media today in the world of high technology. Technology was created to distract us from our humanity and human relationships. It is fake. Think of what radio, television, telephones, mass media have done to our minds and human relationships. We are wired together, but it is inhumane. The matrix is our mind. It is a struggle with what is real inside our heads. Who are we really? Are we just robots that don't get the choices we take? Are the choices we make just another form of delusion, even if we think we know? What is inside our mind running the show of our life? Essentially, free will is bullshit until we commit to something completely. Otherwise, we are just an automatic pilot or machines. I'd like to make, I'd like to cut in here and make the argument that free will can be, the notion of free will can be defeated both with rational and empirical arguments, okay? So you could imagine a causal chain cause one leading to cause two leading to cause three and there's always causes that drive the next set of actions and to say that we have free will or that the agent is able to go forth and arbitrarily choose something means that you're like drawing a wall before all the causal chain and the agent is going to arbitrarily do something irregardless of previous factors that are actually forcing him to do those things okay and that doesn't make any logical sense the empirical argument is, I read in my neuroscience books, that you have sensory inputs come in, okay, from your five senses. There's automatic processing, automatic unconscious processing, mathematical formulas being 
taking place, okay, based on your neural networks and the weights of the connections. And it produces outputs that tell you to say, think, feel, and do things. Your consciousness is only told after the fact, like a manager being given a report. Okay, so to reiterate, all these processes happen automatically. You think, feel, say, do things, and then you are informed about them afterwards. Okay, you didn't have any part in directing those things. But then once it comes to light in your consciousness, people think that that was a free action. Okay, I was a philosophy major. I was really into the idea of debating free will. And, you know, we can continue here, but I just wanted to, to point that out. And again, when you remove free will, then what does that say about ethics? Or what does it say about creativity? So when Neo got unplugged in the first movie, it signaled that he chose a path or purpose. But the real battles were beginning. All the battle scenes in the film are metaphors for barriers inside our minds. Morpheus tells him to free his mind. And Neo is, whoa, dude, free my mind? Neo was far from awake when he took the red pill. Neo represents confusion. Neo is supposed to be awake, but he is the opposite of awake. Neo is confused. The viewer is supposed to be confused also. This is why people don't understand the movies. It is a joke. It is funny when you get it. In the first meeting Neo had with the Oracle, Neo was confused by the discussion with the boy about the spoon. Neo was confused about breaking the vase in the kitchen, confused about the sign in the kitchen, confused about Trinity, confused about Morpheus and the Oracle, confused by the conversation with the Oracle, confused about his identity and his purpose, and confused about the cookie. Why was the Oracle's apartment in a shitty part of the city? It represents what our mind looks like. Our minds are filled with clutter, but parts of the mind are awake. The Oracle represents the intuitive parts of the mind. That is why little kids are with her. They are untainted by garbage. In the second Matrix movie, The Matrix Reloaded, Neo's meeting with the Oracle on the park bench is a philosophical discussion about choice. He still is confused. Remember, the movie begins with Neo worshipped by people in Zion, but he is not comfortable with this role. He just thinks of himself as a normal dude. Neo doesn't get what is happening until the very end of the last movie. In The Matrix Reloaded, Agent Smith becomes viral because Neo has committed to his purpose. The mind will do everything possible to get him off the path. The distractions will multiply. Agent Smith in the first movie was the mental force that prevented Neo from getting on his path. The viral Agent Smith represents the distractions to keep him from staying on his path. In The Matrix Reloaded, French restaurant scene, the Merovingian mocks Neo for being deluded, even after being unplugged. Merovingian says to Neo, you are here because you obeyed a command without question. You don't even bother to ask why. Despite everything Neo has learned, he still does not get it. That is also a recurring theme in the movie. The Wachowski brothers chose Keanu Reeves and made Neo a dope for a reason. The Merovingian lectures Neo about causality, arguing that humans are not free. We are reactionaries, proving it by drugging a hot female customer in his restaurant, then hurrying off to get a BJ from her in the toilet, but it backfires on him. There is a reason why the Merovingian is French and why the Wachowskis chose the French dynasty because the Merovingian is an avatar for arrogance. The Merovingian is arrogant, but his arrogance gets taken down because the Merovingian did not expect that his wife would choose to liberate Neo, Morpheus, and Trinity and hand the keymaker over to them. So what usually happens to arrogant people? They eventually get their comeuppance. The wife of the Merovingian allows them to go free, for a price of course, a kiss from Neo, demonstrating again that Neo is still asleep because Neo never acts independently of the manipulation of other characters in the movie. Neo's mind is not free yet, still deluded. Our mind plays games with us. Afterward, there are many battle scenes in the Matrix, reloaded. It is fascinating that the Wachowskis specifically chose Silicon Valley for the brilliant freeway fight scenes. Silicon Valley is at the heart of the Matrix in our real world, the one we live in. When the freeway battles finish, Neo meets the architect, the creator of the Matrix. They have a philosophical discussion about choice. In the background, there are hundreds of televisions of Neo making hundreds of different choices and getting different outcomes simultaneously. Neo is the one, but he struggles to understand his choices, while the other characters don't have this problem. When Neo first got unplugged, he looked around at the real world in his battery chamber. Yet while recovering in the Nebuchadnezzar, Neo said that his eyes hurt to Morpheus, who says, because you have never used your eyes before. 
Notice Neo is physically blind, but his mind is awake in the last scenes of the Matrix Revolutions. The filmmakers are always contrasting being awake with being blind. Neo is supposed to be awake in the Matrix, but he is blind until the final scene of the Matrix Revolutions, where he becomes physically blind, but his mind becomes wide awake. After saving Trinity from the fall and bullet at the end of the Matrix Reloaded, Neo returns to Morpheus and explains they were manipulated by the Architect and the Oracle, jerked around by rationality and intuition. Since taking the red pill, and after all the struggles, Neo tells Morpheus he is uncertain about everything. Neo is confusion at the end of the second movie. Neo says to Morpheus, everything they believed was just another system of control. This is the first time Neo says anything intelligent in the movies. But Neo is still confused. After hearing this, Morpheus has an existential crisis for about two seconds, and then the Nebuchadnezzar gets destroyed. There, there is another central theme in the movies. There is a continuous reset. Reset after reset after reset. The last movie, The Matrix Revolutions, begins with Neo in limbo between the real world and the Matrix because the architect destroyed his delusions about the path he was supposedly on in The Matrix Reloaded. Neo is at a loss for what to do next. What he thought was real was not real, so he's more confused. Neo can transcend the Matrix and the real world, as we saw at the end of The Matrix Reloaded, but he is in a coma now at the start of the third film. Neo is in limbo. The sign in the subway station says, Limbo Avenue, if you arrange the letters. Morpheus, Belief, and Trinity, Integrity, go back into the Matrix to drag Neo out of limbo. They need to save Neo from his confusion. Trinity and Morpheus visit the Oracle, and the Oracle has another philosophical discussion with the humans about choice. Neo in the subway station at Limbo Avenue has a discussion about karma with the Indian dude that he meets outside. Neo is even more confused. Choice or causality? He still does not get it. The movie viewer does not get it either. You are supposed to be confused just like Neo. Remember, these movies are pieces of art. Meanwhile, Morpheus and Trinity visit the Mer Merovingian and his BDSM club and have another philosophical discussion about choice. The conversations about choice never end in the movies. At the end of the second movie, The Matrix Reloaded, Neo was willing to destroy humanity because of his commitment to Trinity, integrity. Remember, Neo's name in The Matrix is Mr. Anderson, so he already rejected being the son of man, which is what Mr. Anderson means. Trinity, integrity, could only drag Neo out of limbo, confusion, because she was willing to do anything for Neo, specifically to get Neo back on his purpose. The Merovingian sexy wife said in the last movie in the dungeon disco scene, Trinity will do anything for Neo, no matter what it takes. That's integrity. Their relationship is not about love, but total commitment to a purpose. Trinity keeps Neo on his purpose, or rather, integrity keeps Neo on his purpose. Trinity is at the heart of these movies because she is his heart. So many people get caught up in the notions of romantic love, but their relationship is more profound than a romance. Trinity represents the human heart, but not the, only, but not the one that pumps blood, but transcends struggle and motivates us in life. Human integrity, human belief, human purpose, human struggle, and human commitment transcend the mind's distractions, confusion, artifices, and desires, and mechanical automation, the matrix. Commitment until death is a significant theme in the Matrix movies for the characters inside and outside the Matrix. The end of the Matrix revolutions is the final reconciliation. Trinity, integrity, has kept Neo on his purpose. Morpheus, belief, has kept Neo on, on purpose. Neo does not need Trinity anymore, so she dies. He is no longer confused. Neo is awake now, but physically blind. Neo has a final battle with Agent Smith inside the Matrix. Neo finally gets it after Smith taunts him. Do you even understand why you are here, Mr. Anderson? Neo says, because I choose to. Neo finally has made a con conscious decision. Instead of struggling, Neo chooses reconciliation with the mind, the Matrix. He reconciles with distraction, struggle, Smith, belief, Morpheus, rationality, architect, intuition, oracle, causality, the Indian girl. Neo accomplished his goal. He is now whole and complete. Then the entire thing resets again for the next goal. That is how the series ends. The most critical line of the movie comes from the little androgynous boy at the Oracle's apartment in the first movie when he tells Neo that there is no spoon. In other words, our delusions are not real, just mental fl uh, flotsam and jetsam. Okay, nothing is permanent. There is no identity. There is no one. Nothing is pulling the strings inside us. This is the very definition of enlightenment. There is no spoon. That didn't cover, unfortunately, uh, too many parallels to, or too many uh, discussion points regarding Rolo's book. 
okay? Um, but this is gonna presumably provide some backstory as things move forward, okay? So I want to encourage you guys, if you're looking to master your dating life, to crush it on Tinder, to crush it at the bars and clubs, crush it during the daytime, know everything that you need to know to text, to run your dates, to close your dates, to retain, get on a free 30 minute call with the link in the description. And uh, it's also the link in the, in the pinned comment. It's the first link in the top of the description. And we will sort you out and get you very good, very fast. Okay. Please like and comment and share. Also, please check on the end screen, the playlist of the previous videos in this series as well. Thank you guys and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. And Jay don't stand in line. I ain't never had to wait. I'm the realest in this game. I ain't never had to fake. Just take a look at the scores. I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.